monsters welcome back happy holidays Merry Christmas is actually the day after Christmas so I've been sitting on stuff for a little bit now my family does Christmas always like a little bit early just in case of all the trash and all the commotion and everything so I am here to actually show you guys some of my favorite things that I've gotten this year uh, across family and everything. Uh, I actually have my uh, Dirty Santa present that I did uh, with my boyfriend's family. I love doing it every single year. It's so much fun uh, because there's some stuff I want to make videos with. I just would like opinions on it if you guys want to see some of the stuff uh, or if it's a I do it while we are watching cartoons. So we're gonna start with one of my favorite things and that is books. Uh, we went to thrift books like last year. I absolutely love thrift books with every ounce of my being. There are a couple books from McKay's also. It's a kind of like a used bookstore, like a thrift store. Not really a thrift store. McKay's is like a pop culture thrift store, if that makes any sense. It's a really interesting place. Uh, but yeah, uh, I got some art books again this year. I love art books. I probably should do an updated art book tour at this point, kind of going through my favorites, because I've realized I... I realized with this year what I picked out, I do kind of gravitate towards certain authors and certain artists, so I'm pretty well versed in some of this stuff. So let's just start. The, I got five this year. Uh, the first one is Painting Fabulous Flowers from Donna Dewberry. This is not my first Donna Dewberry book. Uh, I think I have a couple other ones. Uh, but these flowers are always so detailed. The guides are perfect. It's often with uh, pretty affordable paint that I know easy to follow along with. It's all pretty. It's really basic technique, but to make really gorgeous pieces. I have a lot of stuff that I want to paint flowers on, so having more flower books is always very helpful. Uh, next up, this one is from, what was the man's first name? Uh, John Agnew. Uh, I took the dust jackets off because I hate the feeling of dust jackets, but this is Painting the Secret World of Nature. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Uh, I told myself that I want to try and venture out into what I'm painting next year. Uh, it's a gorgeous book. Again, this one is all about... Uh, well, nature, if it's not obvious. In nature, a whole process on wood, sand, moss. Like, I didn't know uh, painting stone could be a five-step process. It's absolutely fascinating. Scales and eyes, insect damage. I, I wouldn't think to paint insect damage when I'm painting leaves. And I just think I could combine the knowledge of this book plus all my floral books. And I could do something really intricate. Uh, next up, another one. This is more of like specific projects kind of book, but I like books that are more based around certain projects that I can adapt to other things. Uh, but uh, you'll see why I like this one. This is elegant lettering for your home. Uh, here, this one is a project for a lampshade cover. It shows the colors and everything, everything you're gonna need. And then you actually get a little template that you can trace. The reason I really like that is I can essentially, if I have something that these templates will fit on, I can use these templates for pretty much anything that they fit on. It's also just really fun to kind of see how crafting has evolved. Uh, a lot of my art books are older. Uh, a lot of them are from either the like, late 90s or early 2000s. This one specifically, the copyright is... Yeah, this one is... Yeah, there it is. 2005. Okay, next up, this is gonna be kind of a weird one because I've never really shown this in my channel, but I have done this before. It is Creative Ceramic Painting by Cheryl Owen. Uh, the reason I picked this out is we actually do ceramic painting as a family pretty much any time we go to Walt Disney World. Uh, we, we stay at the DVC Resorts because we are Disney Vacation Club members, and specifically at Saratoga Springs, our favorite resort alongside Old Key West, uh, Saratoga Springs actually has a kiln where you can do ceramic painting. I love doing it. My fruit soda bats are, were done at Saratoga. I have a little blueberry penguin piggy bank. And I always want to do more and more intricate things. And I never really quite know what to do. I just kind of adapt what I know from acrylics into the ceramic glaze paint. Uh, and I just really wanted a specific ceramic book so I can learn more about how this paint goes, how it works. And so this is, uh, again, it's a project-based book about doing specific things. However, again, we have the templates. So in theory, 
what I could do is kind of pick out what I would like to do and almost bring the templates with me or even just bring the book with me and adapt these projects to something at Saratoga Springs. I, just, I really love it. Uh, my probably favorite, like the one thing I want to do the most is it's this project about leafy dinner plates about pressing leaves into things. I would love to do like a, just a leaf project. And the last one is Painting Your Favorite Flowers Step by Step by Mary M. Weissman. It's another flower book. And this one I really like as well. Again, it's a very intricate process. This book is from 2001. So I don't think, yeah, a lot of my cousins weren't alive when this book was done. 20 plus step process. It is fascinating. I love these really intricate colors and it also gives you uh, very specific ratios for the colors. And to paint on, um, when in doubt mom will just get me a 10 pack of canvases uh, from Artist Loft. They're honestly the best canvases that I have worked with. Uh, they're really affordable. They always come in these big packs. I think I'm still actually working on the 10 pack that she got me last year because it's pr it's a tried and true thing that she knows I will use them especially when I picked up acrylic pouring and when I uh, just really dedicated time to learning more about acrylics and instead of just drawing in sketchbooks constantly I'm actually painting more uh, this is the this is the dirty Santa gift so uh, if you don't know what a dirty Santa is I believe it's also referred to as white elephant uh, we essentially all of the adults brought something and we pick numbers we get to pick and there's like uh, stealing and whatnot. Uh, this is what I got. This is a little lantern um, snow globe. So when I turn this switch, I already put batteries in it. Not only does it light up, but there's a fan in here to keep this glitter snow actually moving. And I, I love this little guy. It's so cute. Um, I may have to turn the light off so you guys can see him a little better. But it's a gorgeous little, almost like vintage appearing little Santa. And when, if you don't have batteries in him, he also has a little button. So what I would love to do is almost vintageify this more. Uh, I want to do some black paint. I want to do some dry brushing. But I also want to see if I can find a way to tint this plastic that is on here. I have some ideas on how to do that. But I want, I want to just vintageify this. I want to make this look super old super vintage i really want to do it and just maybe like take a little bit of this like plasticky feel away i think some new paint will just do it justice and turn this into something really beautiful uh but yeah it's just it's a cute little lantern i really like it this next thing is kind of big it's not art supplies but i absolutely love this my mom got got this for me uh, also got it for sibling and mainly actually got a different version of this thing she got the big thunder mountain version of this but this is the version I got. Uh, this is a stuffed animal uh, little set, uh, six piece thing. This was for the Walt Disney World like 50th thing. They were doing these uh, collections based on attractions. And this is the Mad Tea Party version of the main six. I absolutely love this. Oh, there's like some information on the back. Oh, there's actually a little bit blurb. The Mad Tea Party is a Walt Disney World opening day attraction where guests can celebrate a very merry unbirthday as they spin and twirl in a whimsical wonderland of oversized pastel teacups inspired by Mad Hatter's Tea Party sequence in Walt Disney's animated classic Alice in Wonderland, one of my like favorite IPs, one of my favorite movies. Weirdly enough, I didn't get into Alice in Wonderland because of the Disney movie. It was actually the American McGee games. The Walt Disney World version of the attraction is located under fantastical... Oh, fanciful canopy decorated with colorful lanterns and features a towering teapot in the center of the attraction from which the Dormouse can occasionally be peeking out. But, uh, yeah, it's a gorgeous little set. Uh, I haven't opened this yet because I don't know where the heck I'm gonna put them. I don't really have, like, a shelf in my room to put them. Everything about it. I love Minnie and Daisy's dresses. Specifically, I would love a mad tea party, like, teacup dress. Uh, to the point where I have considered sewing one. Speaking of Disney, uh, this was something I actually picked out for me and sibling. Uh, like, the long story short of it, um, my mom had Kohl's cash to use, and I literally waited for my sibling to go to the bathroom so she wouldn't hear me. And I told her, I was like, Mom, I think I, think I found uh, what, what to get us. Because I saw a 
Mickey Mouse Club bracelet set for her, for me. This is a Winnie the Pooh. It's, it's very dainty. It's very hard to like show it, but it's a little line art, little necklace of Pooh Bear and Piglet. It's, it's shifting on me. Quit doing that, please little necklace i don't usually wear gold jewelry but i love this i don't care that it's gold i absolutely love winnie the pooh to the ends of my heart uh it, it is probably my favorite disney property of all time i am very sentimental about winnie the pooh for a variety of reasons but uh the main reason is uh something i was always told throughout my entire life is that i was meant to have a classic winnie the pooh nursery a la Winnie the Pooh before, I, I believe it might be before he was bought by Disney or essentially before he was in a red shirt. I was meant to have an entire classic Winnie the Pooh nursery. And unfortunately, before I could actually be in it while my mom was still pregnant, like a bathroom flooded or there was something, something Kate did. I, I just know something catastrophic happened to that nursery, to that house, and I could not be in it. And so it's kind of just been, it's been my like life's work to rebuild that nursery and collect as much classic Winnie the Pooh as I can to the point where when my grandparents actually got me a classic Winnie the Pooh lamp uh, for my birthday a few years ago that I was crying. Uh, the other necklace uh, I have, I have two pieces of jewelry, uh, is also from my mom. So in this family, we have some weird nicknames. We call Maylee our monkey uh, when she was a baby, uh, when we were ba first babysitting her. One of the first animal noises that she was obsessed with making and like learning what sound animals make was a monkey. She loved making monkey sounds to the point where we call her our monkey. And so mom actually found a monkey necklace for her. So she's wearing a monkey necklace constantly now. Uh, she calls sibling turtle. Uh, it's actually quite a funny story. When we were also first watching her, she loved what, looking at animal photos on our phones. And she was obsessed with looking at pictures of sea turtles. So at one point we are watching the kiddo and she is just tugging on sibling, saying turtle. Like turtle, like she couldn't say, I want to look at turtles. She was just saying turtle. And so uh, the more she did that, the more she real, uh, Maylee realized, oh, this one responds to turtle. And then therefore, sibling became turtle. I am May May. Uh, the, this name was not really picked for me. It just kind of happened. Um, usually when kids uh, that are around me, they can't say Maddie or Madison or anything like that. I just, I get re reverted to May May. Every kid eventually calls me May May. So mom actually picked out for me a necklace from uh, one of my favorite animals. Mom knows I love the movie Coraline and butterflies and just insects in general. It's one of my favorite gem jewelries that I have now. It's stunning. It's blue, so it like gives me Coraline. It makes me a corpse bride. Just, it's very, very pretty, and I absolutely love this thing. Uh, there is a little uh, engraving on it that just says "I love you" and like two dancing dragonflies. It's, it's just stunning. Last up, that is in this uh, K that are in some Kid 95 box. This is actually all my clay stuff I got this year. Uh, obviously, mom knows that. It's like, when in doubt, just pick me out some clay. But I also picked out new texture mats. I love texture mats. I have fallen in love with them. So this is the first little set I got. It's a kind of fabric-y knit one. I have a straight line one, and this one is tiles on the back. And this one is one kind of knit version and then this version of knit it's so awesome i'm really excited i already have ideas and the second set i picked out is all florals i do have like some leafy texture mats but these are way more way more intricate so this is one side of them we've got this really nice like oh, it's straight up almost lacy on the other side is this sort of pattern where it's a wide range of sizes of flowers this one, I'm calling it Girly Epcot Ball, which is like chrysanthemums, I believe, and there's like some geometrics in there. And then this really neat, like, this reminds me of a dress. I don't know why. 
uh, this this kind of pattern. It's like leaves and what I think maybe are water lilies or maybe crocus flowers. I'm not sure. And this one, there's a simple pattern here on this side. One of like leaves and flowers of all different sizes. They're really interesting. All of the clay that is in this box. Uh, I told mom, it's like, well, are there any colors you're low on or any colors like you need or want to try out? Like, I know they keep making new colors. It's like, I am trying to think outside the box in terms of how I want to work with clay. And I'm thinking that it would best, it was best for me to actually get a lot of primary colors. So I could then learn uh, color mixing recipes a little bit better. But there all are also just some fun colors in here. It's a lot of Craft Smart that I, I straight up never thought I'd get to own this art supply. I straight up never thought I would. And I am still a little bit in awe that I'm holding it. I actually got some Cernet clay. Um, it's the Cernet translucent stuff. This stuff has been very hard to get a hold of, uh, especially in my area where I didn't even know we were getting it. It came to Michael's, turns out, and a lot of people lost their minds. But Cernet is very, very nice clay. It is very, very nice. It is extremely hard to get a hold of in some areas. So I have two blocks of normal translucent clay. I also have one block in the color sapphire, or just gorgeous color. Uh, one in the color turquoise blue. It is just absolutely pretty, pretty, pretty. And then I also have one in the color Bordeaux. Uh, it's just, it's, they're, they're gorgeous colors. And I'm a little intimidated to use it. These are probably going to be a video all on their own where I'm trying certain clay. I'm very intimidated. I'm a little bit afraid. <laughs> As for the Craft Smart colors I got, I literally just poured the whole box in my lap so I can put them back as I show you. As for blues, I have two blocks of dark blue and one of this really pretty color, Denim. Uh, this is one of their newer colors. It's just a really pretty cool tone blue. In term, these are all the colors that I got that uh, are kind of not for mixing. They're either hard for me to mix or they're just colors I tend to use a lot base-wise. Uh, this is dark green. Oh, this is actually a really pretty color. I actually found dark purple finally. Dark purple, I, I struggle to mix purples a lot. Uh, a new brick of brown. I eat through brown clay a lot. Another one of their new colors, eucalyptus. Such a pretty color. Magenta, another color I tend to use on its own, and it's a really hard color for me to mix. One of my tried and true colors, candy cherry. Gorgeous little color. And also a new brick of silver. I eat silver clay up like crazy when I'm making projects. Four bricks of white, because I always need white clay. In terms of red, I have three bricks of dark red. I always need reds a lot, even though they stain. I think I have some dark red that I haven't used from last year when there was a kerfuffle. I also have two bricks of regular red that are much brighter. Two bricks, oh, two bricks of yellow and then one brick of light yellow. I actually use light yellow a lot. I also just have a brick of black, and this is actually a gray brick. I wanted just a simple slate gray kind of color. Also for mixing purposes, a brick of tan, uh, mixing clays, a brick of translucent, and a new brick of glow-in-the-dark. I love glow-in-the-dark clay. I love it so, so much. And maybe, maybe finally, I can make some interesting glow-in-the-dark projects with it. I was grabbing the last thing, and I didn't realize that I actually missed a book. Uh, I'm not sure where it is, but I have the dust jacket. It's another Donna Dewberry book, but it is the One Stroke Painting Course book. Uh, it's a great book. I, I know it's somewhere. It might be in the kitchen uh, where I paint a lot. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. I love the idea of one stroke painting. This is probably going to be a video all on its own of learning one stroke painting. Uh, but I don't know where that book is. But the actual last thing I wanted to show you guys is... Dun -dun -dun -dun! Mom got me gouache paint. I have been enthralled at the idea of gouache paint. So she actually got me two different sets because there's things that I've never really worked with before. Uh, I have an Artist Loft jelly gouache set. I have not opened these yet. Um, this one has, I don't want to say opened, but I dealt with the packaging that is this one. This is from Jen Crafts. It's a 50 gouache paint set. Uh, here are all of the colors on the side. A lot, a lot of colors. And I actually have the first time I've ever dealt with this kind of thing. Um, I have been so used to using paint in this format, like actual bottles like this, 
that something I've never gotten to use before is paint from tubes. I've straight up never gotten to in my entire life. Uh, and I'm really excited for that. In addition, um, as I just said, I've been dealing with Apple Barrel and Folk Art paint my entire life. So I've been using paints that uh, when I'm looking at projects and books or when I'm learning how to paint from videos and they use specific color names, I tend to not have them. I have to eyeball and I would kind of sometimes feel bad when I was a kid that, you know, like my red apple doesn't quite look like their carmine red. I would, I, just, I, would, I never had the right colors. But with this set specifically from Jen Crofts, I actually do have the proper ones, an actual scarlet red, an actual carmine red, an actual Prussian blue, etc, etc. So I also find it very funny that there is a paint color named after a professional wrestler. This is Fandango in the paint tube, and this is WWE's Fandango. But I'm, I'm very excited to start with these. Uh, I've been wanting to just get into gouache and i absolutely love the idea of it i'm a little intimidated i'm not gonna lie um oh here's the swatches for the jelly gouache tube again I, uh, the jelly gouache set uh really pretty it did come with brushes really nice brushes actually but that is everything i got in terms of christmas for 2023 uh i hope this doesn't come across as bragging or anything i know some people would love to get pretty much anything uh, in terms of the holidays. I'm not trying to do that in any way, shape, or form. This is just me kind of showcasing new inventory and new things for projects and also just seeing what people want to see. Uh, so if you guys uh, enjoyed this, let me know. Uh, what did you guys get for the holidays? If you did get any fun art supplies, what would you like to see me use? If anyone here has used Cernic Clay before, please give me tips. Uh, I know some people find it brittle, some people find it sticky, so I don't know what the heck I'm doing here, so if you can help me learn, that'd be great. Uh, just what things do you want to see me do? First, I'm always open to ideas. I love taking suggestions from the comments. I've made some great videos because of you guys. Consider subscribing to this channel to see more of this face, and you can see what lovely things I make with all of this. In addition to all of the lovely art we will be making in 2024, I do have a goals video uh, coming soon that I will be making probably after this, to be honest. I hope 2024 treats you all well. Let's go into this this new year with kindness and good in our hearts. I will see you next time, monsters. Bye!